Hello, I'm Vivian McGrath from beingunbeatable.com and in this video I'm going to be talking about gaslighting in relationships. Gaslighting, emotional abuse and manipulation. Is that happening to you? Is your gut screaming at you? I know what I just saw, I know what I've just heard, but your partner, the narcissist in your life, whether it's a partner or a colleague, a friend, is denying it point blank and saying you imagined it, that didn't happen, you're too sensitive, you exaggerated it. Well, that is gaslighting. And they may be lying to you, yet saying to you, you're the one who's lying. They might be having an affair, yet accusing you of being unfaithful, saying that you are doing everything it is that they are doing. That's gaslighting. It, didn't, it doesn't happen at first. At first, they're really charming. They really win with these beautiful, charismatic personalities. But then their mask starts to slip and you start to see this uh, manipulation come in. And it might be that first you see the sign of their darker side. It's a flash of anger or they say something really nasty and rude to you. You're fat or whatever. And then when you get upset and raise your concerns about it with them, they, they then tell you, well, no, that didn't happen the way you're making out. You're the problem, not them. And it's designed to do that, to confuse you and get you off balance, in, if you like, and make you walk on eggshells because the aim of the game, once they do this over and over and over again, and you're exposed to it a lot, it starts to distort your sense of reality. And that's what gaslighting is all about. You start to think, well, maybe I did imagine that. Maybe, maybe I was wrong. And it's a really effective tool. It's actually used by cult leaders, um, dictators, not just by narcissists. It's a really effective tool. And they, they, they get you into this, this zone where you just don't know what's right and wrong anymore. And the longer you're exposed to it, the more, manipu the more manipulated you become. It's almost like um, you're this frog in boiling water. It, it incrementally, they ratchet it up another notch, another notch, another notch. So by the time you're boiling that water, it's almost too late. You're controlled by them and it's very hard to leave. So I thought it would be worthwhile. I hope you don't mind me reading from a piece of paper because there's quite a lot of these points. I thought I'd go through 10 signs of um, gaslighting that you are experiencing that form of emotional abuse and coercive control. Number one, your gut instincts are at odds with what they are telling you. So you know what you've seen, you know you've heard something that's not nice, it's abusive, it's not right for you, but they're telling you what your perception of what you've just seen is wrong. You are too sensitive, you imagined it, you exaggerated it, or you're making it up. And they're also themselves, what they're saying and what they're doing is at odds as well. So they might be saying things like, you're the only one in the world for me, I need you. Yet on the other hand, they're saying, well, you're a fat slag and uh, you're a controlling bitch or um, whatever. You know, they, they, they're not showing respect. They're not treating you as worthy, even if they are saying you are that to them. It's at odds. And over time, your self-esteem becomes worn down because it, it's like this water torture. It just chips away at you little by little by little. And you start to believe them. And even though your gut is screaming at you, your head is saying, this is not right, I need to get away your heart tugs at you to stay. And that's why gaslighting is a really, um, it's worth a whole video today on the subject because it's very, very insidious. Secondly, they lie. 
they lie and they can tell you the biggest bull face lie to your face even when they know you know they're lying and they will stand by that lie and that becomes the truth and it's one of those things if you lie often enough eventually it becomes the truth and that is the case with gaslighting they just lie and lie and lie and lie and lie until the truth which is their behavior gets forgotten about number three they just deny what they've said or done they do something 10 minutes later they're like I didn't do that you're making it up that did not happen and they can do that again with a straight face and believing it and knowing that you know that that's crap and not true but they will just deny it and then the more you go on about it the more you bring it up it becomes that you're the problem they flip it they twist it you are the problem you're the one who's nagging can't you just let it go when I'm trying to be nice why you always want to bring these things up that sort of stuff number four they accuse you of doing what they are doing now that's a classic one they will get jealous and accuse you of having affairs when it's them who's being unfaithful they'll accuse you of lying you are lying when they are the ones who are lying not you they will accuse you of creating arguments of being abusive towards them when it is absolutely them who is the one who is hacking for a fight wanting the argument to start sabotaging the relationship and being abusive number um, five they'll lie to you about others so they might say things like your family doesn't have your best interests at heart they're they're really they're not looking after your needs at all or your friends um, are no good for you can't you see that they are no not they're dragging you down whatever and the aim of that is to isolate you particularly from the very people who might warn you about their gaslighting behavior isolation is one of the biggest tools that narcissists use because all the better to gain control over you number six they'll drag you into crazy conversations from hell is what I call them and what they'll do is if, if you bring up that you're unhappy with their behavior or how they're treating you suddenly they'll blow up this massive smoke screen and it becomes all about everything else but that usually about you that oh what so you think you're so perfect now so yeah that's a, of course you do because you were brought up as a spoiled brat with a silver spoon in your mouth and all your friends went to this posh high school and they've never known hardship and they're like Bleh, whatever but as you can see it's you know you're thinking how have I got from me saying please don't be nasty to me to being questioned about the way I was brought up about my friends and the fact that I've got a silver spoon in my mouth how have I got from that to that it's just mad it is nonsense and it is like arguing with somebody who hasn't got the remotest grip on reality it ends up driving you nuts what this actually is about it is about them flipping from the, the attention from them to accusations about you and your behavior and what's wrong with you so that you go on the defensive and you start to think I've got to prove myself I'm not like that no I'm not and you're defending and you're trying to prove and then you've got to start changing your behavior to not be accused of these things and 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 maybe if I do this then they won't they'll be nice to me again again it's just shifting the goalposts taking the blame away from them and putting it onto you and also giving you this belief that if you change your behavior then you can change them which is wrong and this is the reason we stay way too long we think that that 
we can affect a different outcome if we just change our own behavior. They also make blanket statements about you, which is, as I said before, oh, so you think you're so perfect now. You're, you're, you're the perfect one. Mm, great. So, so, you know, your standards are just way too high. That's why you've got a problem with my behavior. Can you see what that's doing? Again, shifting the blame onto you and away from them. Anything other than them taking responsibility and being accountable for their abusive behavior. They'll also bring someone else into the equation, which is known as triangulation. And it could be um, a friend of theirs, their mother, uh, a sibling. It could be one of your siblings. And the reason they do that is so that they can say they have an ally to bring into the argument to say, well, you see, I, I talked about it with that person and that person agrees with me that you're crazy, that you are spoiled, that you are this, that you are that. Again, an ally to say you're to blame, you deserve this abuse, it's got nothing to do with my behavior. Gaslighting is always about putting the blame onto you for their behavior, deflecting their behavior, their behavior, the blame for it, the accountability for it onto you. They also um, might wage smear campaigns, particularly if they fear they're losing control of you and that they're about to lose you. So they'll anticipate that and they'll go around telling as many people as they can about the abuse that they suffered from you, about how much you nagged them, how difficult you were, how um, high st your standards were that they could never live up to them, whatever, how you were a bad mother and don't deserve the children, you know, anything to smear your reputation and your name so that when you leave, it's already counted the fact that you might reveal this true self of who they really are, the narcissist, the abusive person to other people. They just preempt that so you can't. It's really vicious. And some of these smear campaigns after you leave can become incredibly vicious. And often, very sadly, you can lose a lot of friends after leaving a narcissist as a result of that. But I would say to that, you know, the friends that stay around are the ones that matter and mean, mean a lot to you. You know, the ones that leave you, you don't need them in your life. You know, that's all I'd say about that. And then my last one, number 10, they will tell you anything to get you back. Here goes my cat again. Every time I do these videos, she's got to chime in and what do you think, Missy? She's got to give her opinion. She's very old. She's like 22 and a half and she's deaf. So she talks very loudly as well. Anyway, my last one, number 10, is they will do anything and say anything they can to get you back. Hoovering, it's called. I love that word, hoovering. They suck you back in like a hoover. And they will tell you, they love you. I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. And they'll promise to change. But I wouldn't listen to it. They will, they will tell you anything they can and they will say whatever they think you want to hear as long as it takes to get control back over you and to get you back. And once they do and they feel they're secure again, that they've got you under their thumb, You'll be gaslighted again when you question, well, what are you doing about these promises to change? Oh, so you're not going to support me now. I've said I'm going to change and now you're not being supportive enough of me. You know, <laughs> again, deflect from the fact that they're doing absolutely nothing to change. It's all your fault. You're nagging them now. You're not supporting them enough. You're not being the proper wife or husband or girlfriend or whatever. You know, I need you. And when I need you, now now you're not being nice to me. Me, 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 me. That's what narcissists are all about. And that's what gaslighting is all about. Anything to deflect away from anything other than they are perfect. They are um, uh, God's gift to mankind. Any question or any hint 
that you see them as anything other than that or question them about it, well then, bam, the gaslighting will shift it all onto you and away from them being accountable for themselves. So as long as they're going, as long as they're doing that, they're never going to change because they're never going to accept responsibility and be accountable for it. So if you recognize any of those gaslighting signs that I have just gone into, I would really urge you to get help and support. Don't become that frog in boiling water because the longer you're exposed to that type of insidious psychological manipulation that, as I said, works with cult leaders and dictators, um, the harder it is to leave. It is really difficult. And leaving an abusive relationship and a narcissist like I did, it was one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. So if you're seeing those signs now, please get out, get help and support. I've listed many free anonymous helplines that can guide you where to find that on my blog, beingunbeatable.com. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, please click the thumbs up, share it with anyone you think it might help and subscribe. I do these posts regularly and you'll be the first to get these videos straight into your inbox. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.